Today, I'm gonna to share with you a handful of Premiere Pro keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time. Some of them are default ones that are in Premiere, and some of them are ones that I customize myself. The first thing I'm gonna show you is using the Alt key to kind of move stuff around. And what that does is it allows us to kind of just select one piece of our clip, like the video or the audio. So in this case, you know, if you click, you just select everything, but if we hold the Alt key, bam, we just have the video. Or likewise, we could just do the audio. On top of that, we can actually drag as well. So if I hold the Alt key and drag, I'm selecting all of those audio bits just by themselves. There's nothing on them. I can just delete them like that. On top of that, this little cheat one for Mac and for Windows, but if you're on Mac, if you hold down Command and use the arrow keys, you can nudge clips over. On Windows, you hold the Alt key and you can nudge things over just the same exact way. I don't know why it's different between the two, but that's how it is. So that's using the Alt key. Okay, the next one that I like a lot is using the rolling edit tool. That's N on the keyboard. Now we get this little icon that looks like two arrows kind of sticking out with a little slash between. And what that does is it rolls an edit, All right? So now I can make that clip a little longer, make it a little shorter find the spot and it gives us a nice little UI there so you can see like right where it's gonna be on the two clips and there you go so the next tip I have is for adding edit points to your timeline a lot of times people want to go use the blade tool or the razor tool I guess it's called and you kind of can sit here and find points but I find that to be pretty imprecise so what I rather do is I go to the place that I want to add a cut I hit command K and that just puts an edit right there, right where I want it. I'm not sitting there, you know, fiddling like, oh, where's the right place, you know? Now, what's interesting about Command K2 is if you have multiple clips on top of each other, and you gotta make sure your tracks are selected. But then if you don't have anything selected, you hit Command K, it'll put a cut between everything that's in that stack there. If I undo that and I just select this one, then you can see it just puts a cut right in that one. And this works for audio as well, not just video, even though I deleted all the audio. Okay, so now let's remap a few keys. So we're gonna go up here, keyboard shortcuts. And the first thing I like to remap is to use a feature called enable. Make sure you click this one and clip, then enable. I drop that on the B key. I cover up the ripple edit tool. And what that allows me to do is just easily turn a clip on and off. Really useful for comparing takes, for you know, matching color or something if I had to do that. Graphics, whatever, super easy just to turn things on and off as needed. The next one I use all the time is one called set to frame size. We'll just type that in. And I set that on top of the S key because I don't find that I need the snapping feature all that often. These are 4K clips, but I have a 1080p timeline. So if I use set to frame size, I click the S key and bam, it just kind of automatically sets the frame to the size. Same thing here, just quickly sets that for me. And if you look over here, you can see it scaled it automatically for me by 50%. So you could also use scale to frame size. Uh, that's a little bit different. That would scale the whole thing down and then it would still say it was 100% over here. I think I might make a video about the difference between set to frame size and scale to frame size later. But for most uses, set to frame size, I think is the right way to go. And it just makes it really fast to scale footage down uh, if I'm working in an HD timeline. The next one I do is the ripple edit tool. So we'll go down here, type that in. And by default, that was actually on B. We cover that up. Uh, so I'm gonna put it back on the R key. Get it, ripple, R, makes sense. By default, the R key is on the rate stretch tool, but I find that I don't really need that super often. Uh, if you do, that's just right in here. So if I hit R and I go to the ripple key, it does just that. It ripples my edits around. So you can see, I wanna extend that, it extends it, moves those clips back. I wanna make this clip longer, extend it, pushes those clips back. Pretty easy, use it all the time. The next thing I do is I remap the backslash key, and for reference, that's this key, not this one, that one. And what I do with that is I set it to apply default transition to selection, and I apply that over there. This is a very avid 
keyboard shortcut, at least it was back when I used Avid, and if I just hit the backslash, then it just automatically adds a little transition for me. You can also go in the middle of clips, so if I just want a little cross dissolve between them both, it does that. Sick. And it applies that transition based off wherever you have your default set to be. So if you go into your preferences, timeline, you can set those defaults right here. You can set them seconds, frames, whatever you want it to be. It will default to whatever this is set to when you add your transitions. So that's really fast and helpful. So those were a few keyboard shortcuts that I use in Premiere. I use them a ton. So hopefully they help you guys as well. And please be sure to stay tuned, get subscribed. I'm gonna be sharing a lot more tips of how to get things done faster in Premiere. So I will see you in the next one.